Well, come back, everybody. Top eight on each side. Every, every lane's been oiled, so that's why they are so far from each other. Boys are bowling from 5 to 12, and girls from 29 to 36. And then upcoming rounds will move further in the middle of the center. Format is still best out of three. I think that's the same format all the way around, even in the finals. Yes, the Maisen finals are also best of three. Here at the far and high end of the center, we have two Scandinavian matches. Sweden-Denmark, Finland-Denmark on the girls' side. Then we have England against Ger uh, France and Denmark against Ireland. Boys are deep in the lane on those two matches. They're gonna get nasty these lanes. Naturally, Matthias, that I thought would be one of the one furthest in, is quite far right. Again, definitely no match play and one lane courtesy. I think it says in the rules that no match play. You can't even decide. That was only meant for those semi-finals and finals. So again, we'll be going in a quick pace. But we are going to keep bowling basically all the time now, with no major breaks. Next round starts in a little more over an hour. As this is the first time we're using 35 and 6, I know you bowled a couple times on that pair. That high hit for Emma on lane 36, surprising or no? Well, I haven't been bowling those lanes recent years at all, so I don't know if there is that big of a gap between 35 and 36, but usually 36 has been hooking more than 35, but the difference hasn't been that big okay. instead of 1 and 2. One hooks always. Yes, one four hooks a lot more. more. Mistake there by Emma, missing the six pin. Getting that advantage to Sophie. Yeah, I think 36 is not as, as dry as it used to be, and it's definitely do tighter down lane if you're hooking at it than it used to. Now we are not using live screens on TV, we are using actually online scoring and it's going to complete the frame when it's ready. So if there's something else than a strike, like let's say 9, it will be 9 is pair after the spare shot. But as you can see on the screen, you can still easily follow what's going on. And the reason for this is that some of the cameras especially on the early part of the bowling center would have been not sharp enough, let's say, put it that way. So well, this is actually better to do it this way. As you can see, for example, pardon me. There were sometimes actually for yeah. him in Svensson Askel it said six. Yeah, and same thing for Kaiser. I've always thought about that in watching following live score here. Sometimes it shows it, sometimes it doesn't. So it, yeah, I've never understood how. Yeah, it just works. And now somehow it's it thinks Kaiser's done with the frame with the nine. Yeah. 
I think it has something to do with the auto refresh or something. Yeah, I asked. E either way, will be it'll be good to, or easy to. Follow yeah, we from. can follow it anyways. There's some early leads in the boys' side. Tuna with one open, no doubles against Magnus. He's trailing the by a lot. Flores, eight spare, six spare, nine spare. Following Matis' perfect start so far. And that was perfect too. Benjamin is deep in his match against Mata Mate bowling. Left the fourth arrow already, I believe. by Emma but la flat turn or ringing flat turn there allowing Sophie to have a chance to go over 30 pin lead a bit unfortunate night and her twin sister right next door top eight at the European Championships no biggie no Karen seems like she's on cruise control. Doesn't look comfortable. My mom is dead. And a best of three match. It is not a good thing to show your opponent that you're nervous. The pace of play is definitely fast. Yeah, it's not going to take that long. Melissa there with a the double took the lead over Jessica, but now missing the 3-5-6 gives it back, and Jessica has a chance to extend that too. Karen seems pretty happy with her situation. I don't see her missing the pocket many times these two or three games. Well, so Sophie seems to be lining up pretty nicely on that pair. Looking like twins are going to take 1-0 lead each. And Jessica did strike and Melissa misses again. Or does, fails to strike. Melissa actually isn't hit at the pocket after all. Oh, the two strikes were lucky. The other one was Brooklyn. Jessica has been pretty solid this week and bowling a lefty. I don't see her uh, wedding into a lot of trouble that match. She'll be hard to beat. Well, it was actually quite surprising that she on only finished fourth in the all events. Uh, she looked a little too over eager in the final day of teams. Emil again, as, as in the finals yesterday in the team boys' team final, has failed to strike in the, all these five first attempts. And Mika that dropped out Marcus before, now in a comfortable lead through five, or actually probably six, probably missing a strike already.
And then with that strike, he's leading by 20 against Monica. Oh, Jessica yes. has missed. Just as we said, Jessica is about to be solid. She does that. On the boys' side, I'd say Manglus and Matthias have won their first game. Mikael Dela leaves the, left the two-pin, which is fine. He's leading by 37. And will now should start striking and putting the pressure on Mikael. Another strike for Sophie, and that's pretty much locks the first game. And as the door was open for Melissa, she had a chance to take the lead, but she fails and actually splits. And Jessica oh. gets to beat a little bit. On that 30 lane, she has Brooklyn high hit a four pin, and now 210. So every, every shot has been high. Great pickup. Four point game. And Hannah there gets a tickler strike. Go up 30. Is it actually the same pair that Monica played in the first round? I think it is. Yes, it was. That's a blooper. Okay, they oiled the lanes, but they still oiled the it should and, be and a they different one. Draw a lane, but that should, in my mind, it should not be possible. And all lanes do have their own characteristics anyway. Yeah, even though you re-oil them, still you should change. <laughs> Hannah did strike another one, which means she Wind with a mark, though Monica striking here still forces her to mark. That's a two pin game with, between Mate and Benjamin. Exactly. Both working on spare, going to 10th frame. They handled it with an open frame, and that game is also done. As is Matthias and Magnus. It's a big shot here by Benjamin. So it's the issue when you're so deep that if you don't get it dry, the ball just does not see it.
Now interesting between Jessica and Melissa. Jessica needs to spare this 210 to win it. Now Melissa needs another strike yeah. to win it. Or lose by one. Yeah, this delay on the scoring is slightly confusing. I guess we missed, I guess Benjamin made the spare. As he's still waiting for a ball there. And that was probably Mate's first shot. So with the spare, Mate would lead by one. Melis is struck for the second time and she won the first game. Wow, 180 winner. And a spare. Great pick up. So does that mean that nine Mate count? Oh, uh, Benjamin got nine on the fill? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. So Mate needs nine. And sometimes it says over there immediately and sometimes it takes 20 seconds to put it on the board, what happened. Yes, the way to do it. Yeah, that's that's a spot where you normally don't get less than nine. No. Just with that ball reaction. It wasn't really a striking ball reaction, but it was never leaving in flat 7-10 or something like that. Now that's going to stink from Jessica opening the 10, opening the door and now starting with the 4-9. Emma is struggling. She missed 3 6 10 to start the second game. She's finished, she knows 3 6 10 is impossible. <laughs> Melissa changed her urethane to reactive, and since then it's been okay, and Jessica is in trouble. Now starting again mm -hmm. with 4 9 and the way no. Melissa throws it, the advantage of urethane kind of is not there. And in the first round, her urethane worked well, but this time it didn't grab the lane at all. Big double there by Kaisa. Karen left the three pin. The Emma's in trouble. Benjamin win the game here on Mate Benjamin match just to see what Benjamin does game three as he's already fifth arrow nearly. <laughs> Mangs there on the first pair, an early double, and Tuna's already opened once. So strike here in the fourth would really get him closer to the next round and the medals.
There's a lot of mind there for Sophia. She uh, dropped it or something. It was quite far in. Now it's dragging along. It didn't have that spare shot, and Emma had already made a strike in the third. Mikhail starting with a double there against Emil. He's been struggling so far. Emil has three strikes so far. Matthias here on lane seven. Big frame. 18 pins behind. An opponent not on strike. Pretty good shot. Big strike. And puts the pressure on. Monica with an early double against Hannah's open frame. And so that we're going to go to third game there. Sophie went Brooklyn on 36 and very high on 35. So seems like there's some kind of a transition going on. Yeah, her ball seems quite dull, and I guess she's hitting the same spot too often. I'm not moving. Another 10 pin for Jessica. Yeah, it's a little, she's forcing it a little bit too far, much, and it kind of, the ball somehow reads it also and knows. Karen with a double, but now at an eight count. So Kaiser with a strike here would tie the match and have a possibility to take the lead. No, flat too. And Matthias struck again, so now he's actually leading by two. And with that strike, Magnuson, first pair, takes a 36 pin lead and working on strike. It's looking pretty good for him. He needs one more double and, and to stay clean here, the last four frames. Now Sophie was able to hit the pocket once again. Looks like Benjamin moved his breakpoint a little further in even. So he's almost piping it from deep. Another miss for Emma on 3-6-10. Now Jessica left the bucket. I guess her thoughts are on the middle of how co close it is. Up. Very shot by Kaiser there to stay in the match. 
The scoring pace is definitely going down. Another 10 pin from Jessica. Sophie strikes again. And that pretty much seals the deal. Emma yeah, needs to strike out to 15. And I don't see... I don't see that happening. No, no that shot is not good. 3-8. <coughs> That's something that I don't really understand how it's possible, but you can see it occasionally. It just happens to hit the five pin perfectly and it kills the ball and just, well, it's kind of the same thing as, as Solid 8 at that, from that point on. Yeah. It just shouldn't happen. Melis actually, I saw, did that yesterday and made the spare. I so it looked even more random because it was on the left side. I remember in Barcelona over 10 years ago and our good friend Yari Ratia was <laughs> playing and we knew that he needed one strike at least in the 10th to make the finals. That was during qualification. And then Yari made the shot and started waiting. And it looked like that he was happy with the shot. And it hit the nose and there was 3-8-10. So I told him, oh, Yari, you left the triangle. Yeah, the Bermuda triangle. His ball got <laughs> disappeared somewhere in there. But I do remember Yari wasn't laughing. Oh, Karen left the bucket. Yeah, that's really crucial in that situation. And Sophie, with that strike, sealed the deal. Yeah, even mathematics, she only needs like 4-1 four, four yeah. in the next frame. It, it's in the books. So this year, there is no medals coming to the home nation Finland from the Masters. So Emma was the lonely remaining player from Finland. Benjamin here, I didn't see it previous frame, but the la three out of the last four at least have been Brooklyn's. Three? Yeah, this one Brooklyn again, he's... Bowling yeah, like okay, old, he didn't old carry, time. but hit <laughs> the Brooklyn, yeah. <laughs> Five, <laughs> nine. <laughs> Kaiser with the strike, and Karen with the open, with, and the last count. Ka Kaiser only needs to stay clean the last two frames. With that strike, Hannah still has theoretical chance to win. But she needs to strike out and Monica needs to open up in the tenth. Melissa here with the strike basically seals the match. That she'll only need an 8-0 in the last frame. Or yeah, or Jessica was struggling with a 10 pin, then did something on 31 and then hit the nose. Yeah, yeah everything disappeared then. Magnus on the boys' side has won already. Melissa actually left a 4-10. Oh, wow. So high game on that pair is 186 so far. I guess the first one. And more forces Monica to mark. But there's already a strike for Monica. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's because it's yeah, lagging. I was looking at the yeah. Yeah, yeah. screen. Monica sorry. had already seen the deal. Yeah. So it's five point lead for Melissa. And since Kaisa, did she make a spare on that six? She did. I'm looking at the uh, yeah. monitor here. So that's 21 points. 
You know, a strike here would make Kaiser nervous. As then she would need a strike in the first shot, maybe. Jessica left a two pin. So a decent mark from Melissa is enough already. Yes, per seven and you're in the middles. Gonna hit the Brooklyn side. And that's a strike and it seals the deal. Yeah. Moth has opened there in the eighth left Benjamin the match and almost left another split there. Guys are left and ten pin. So, so now we could possibly the tie. Two different ways. Nine spare here for Karen and nine miss or two twenty something tie. Wow. Ecstatic for the strike. Yeah, I would think that she left the seven pin based on her reaction. But and good thing for her, she gets to go first, so she cannot lose if she strikes. And she can get the extra pressure on Kaiser. That looks like a miss, does it? Ouch. So now, nice Twins start. Are Twins are through. Kyra's, uh, Kyra has traveled twice already. Oh, it's twice, okay. So that was the second strike. Yeah. But the Twins will not face <laughs> each other. So, so they might actually face up in the, in the in the final. So this delay is sort of like... this. It's a bit confusing. Yeah. Because we can't watch all the lanes since there are eight matches going on. And well, I would have thought that Melissa would win the match with 186 and 178, but that is what happened. Yeah, and Hannah and Monica are the only pair in the girls' side who is playing the third game. And on the men's side, it could be that there are nobody None, playing. Yeah. The third game. And based on how Benjamin has been shooting, it's not going to be an easy double for him. I mean, that's a weird line to play right now. No, it worked. And I wonder if that it was the first of the center or second. It yeah. seemed like it was the second. Yeah, based, based on, on the reaction. Yeah. And since this delay is over there, it's. And Mate uh, definitely doesn't seem too happy. And that there, I believe, is the match, too. I think Emil and Michael have both struck. Her. Yeah. Oh no. Michael yeah, that was needs a nine that, that count was a all together in the tenth to win by one. No, 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 no. He needs one strike and eight spare if he yeah, strikes yeah. out. But this has it to be a strike because Michael yeah. probably will get nine with two shots. Yeah. So that cr strike was crucial to save count on a possible open or bad opening shot. Yeah, so yeah, that was yeah, the second shot. Second, yeah, because so that third, reaction. Third, third, yeah, 206. So we're going to decide her there. It's going to be interesting to see what he does in the last frame. Last game, sorry. That is not it for Emil. Though, a spare here still forces Mikhail to 9 pins, though 9 pins is not much when he's pulling that straight. And actually 9 is his lowest count this game. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how often you make the spare when you don't kind of not even going for it. Great shot by Hannah. She's actually changed balls to something dark. Was that pitch black or a reactive? Let's see when it comes out of the ball returner. I believe she's throwing the IQ 78. And Mikhail sees the deal. It's still purple hammer. It is purple. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I haven't seen her throw out that ball at all this week. She's thrown the, the, the Storm IQ 70, 78U. Yeah, the red one. So now the boys side, third seeds, ninth, seventh seed, ninth seed lost all to lower seeds. And if Benjamin wins it, it would be 12, 13, 15, 16 in the top four. The host say they wouldn't have done it in the round robin now that they've already bowled two matches. These are quick, it's taken 31 minutes until now. It's looking bleak for Monica now. His hand has started with the phone four. And Monica is 14 under after four frames if she makes the spare. It's already 44 points. probably feels more comfortable also with the purple that hooks earlier and more, it seems. Because if something, she was light quite often with the red ball. But now Jimmy Dan took Hannah's ball accidentally. She thought it was Monica's and <laughs> <laughs> gave it the treatment. <laughs> no, that was um, just a joke. But it could actually there, happen uh, since they have so could, many yeah. purples. You accidentally take the wrong ball. Though Jimmy obviously is not changing the surface there. He's just wiping off the oil of the bowling ball. Oh, with that miss pair. This is basically only just for Hannah to lose. Oh, Benjamin missed the four pin. Quite okay. I think Hannah throws it up back up at the spares. At least during practice she did that. She had the first 300 of her career yesterday evening, sorry, yesterday morning, last game of qualifying the team event. A ball reaction advantage is on Mate's side, but the lane doesn't seem too easy right now because they've just decided to start so deep in. And yeah, that reaction I would there hate is to play with purple hammer from the fifth arrow. Even though Hannah missed that spare, it's still 35. Uh, for, yeah, that's with if, if Monica strikes. I think it's safe to say that none of these four are oozing with confidence right now. I actually didn't see that Monica missed those two pins completely. It was 45. Four frames to go, 45 pin lead. You have a decent reaction. And I'm not, I'm not ready to call this a spare, not just yet on money. And it wasn't. So that's kaput. Uh, yeah, it should be. It is highly unlikely that Monica will strike out for 200 there and still Anna with a decent count here can afford one open. See Mate shot there. Was it the solid egg? It was not, but it was pocket. 
wasn't flat then, but it was kind of flattish eight. Okay. And assuming the rack was okay, then it tells you something about your reaction. He's kind of locked in to be there, though. His reaction is better than Benjamin's, so... Ball, ball reaction-wise, advantage, Martin. Monica keeping her slim hopes alive with that strike. But one, in my mind, quite surprising fact is also that Sweden also missed out on the medals at the Masters. I have to agree. If before the championship even started, there would have been a bet. If this happens for Sweden, I wouldn't bet on this. Not even that. And then at Finland to that, and then definitely would have bet on, on yes, a medal. Yeah. But that just tells you how surprising these Masters finals can be. Well, I guess we're counting Denmark to Scandinavia today for that reason, and, and as they're <laughs> taking almost all the medals. <laughs> Yesterday it was some <laughs> kind of a hybrid, because during medal presentation there was a Scot country called Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Hannah, put it away with that one. Yeah, with a nine count, first shot next frame. Eight one. Even two opens is fine. Yeah. Mata struck again, Benjamin failed. So Mata here with a good shot to have a great position for the last four frames. And that is the exact situation. 13 pins. Well, and now mathematically it is over. Yeah, it's in the box. And with that, Hannah gets a medal, and that's her second here. Two medals for Ireland. I would think that it is, it is more than what they were hoping for. Well, maybe they were hoping as much, or even more, but what their goal was. And I somehow like her spare game, that backup ball and everything. Yeah, when the pattern's displayable, then Yeah, and if she keeps on playing more, I see the potential over there. Whoops. Yeah, Benjamin starts to need finding the pocket. He's avoiding it almost at all costs right now. And also that spare shot sort of like tells the story, story. of a confident young man. No, he's not at the moment, no. <laughs> no, like last game, Mate was hitting the pocket more, and, and he's, where he hit was closer to each other somehow. Benjamin never opened and, and won by a couple. That was a bad idea. Yeah. Lose count, and if he opens up, it's already Benjamin who is leading by a few pins. Somehow, Benjamin just... The stars are aligned. That's the way to respond to a washout shot by Mate. That's the unfortunate and, and minus side of backing it up to wash out. 5-1 happens so easily. Well, it was pretty easy for Billy. 
on TV with straight shot too. <laughs> yeah, twi <laughs> twice in a row against DJ. That's <laughs> insane, and the count there was in crucial. <laughs> and he lost because of those yeah. five ones. I'd like to see the spectator on this match and where the ball hit the pins each shot. It would be all over the place. So it would be pretty much the same as Kimo Lehtonen was using cats in Lake Wells in Florida. There was short and long patterns and you couldn't tell <laughs> which pattern it was. Oh yeah, he was the upper, uh, other end of the spectrum. He was accurate. Yeah, this, he was playing both. They're they're calling the whole lane at the at the, yeah, yeah, down the lane. Funny thing was it? Didn't you see that the other one was 45 and the other it was 35? Because it was the exact same line. I think Linus did that too, like Anders Ehrman. Could be. Not the biggest hook master out there. But the master anyway. That he is. Anders Lukas. Nice pickup by Benjamin. So 2 eight is not an easy spare. Yeah, two four pins. A little blurry, but still four. I think we can remember yeah, the, the difference. The eyesight is our, as our minds a little blurry, especially during the evening. So big frame here for Benjamin. Pretty nice strike on strike on this lane last time. I'm still uh, debating about the strategy used for this match. It seems to work, but well, it's more relying on luck. In these matches, shooting Brooklyn strikes and celebrating like that, it's a good strategy. I yeah. know players who might actually fall for that. Wow. Surprised how beaten up he seems like his four pins behind only and Benjamin has not hit the pocket probably once on the right yeah. hand of this game. And that was a spot where you could sort Easily of have said. some antiques real strike yeah, or something. Like, you know that where the pocket is? Sir? Well that would have been kind of mo too much but real strike. That goes that inside right the looks limits. looks a little bit off for me so Tempin could be easily standing here. Great shot, great strike, though that Brooklyn strike there, to me, it feels a little wrong. Yeah, like you said, it should have been a 10 spare. So now Mate has one Aaron shot that, and he got super lucky and lucky, got five on a spare, and that kind of decided the match. Looks pretty good. Well, it okay, now that it's 4-9 or 9-pin or 4-pin, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. But if that happened earlier in the game also, that would have been just a little, <laughs> little brutal. But, as they say, all scores count, all strikes count. I do not like Benjamin's chances of winning the next match having with, with this strategy. No. So. Four medals to Denmark then. And it, what happened? 12 13th, 15th, 16th seed are through in the boys. You could say that they mastered this uh, format. In the girls it's 2, 6, 7 and 14. And that means Karen will be bowling Melissa and Hannah will be facing Sophie. So no twins facing each other. And Magnus, 12th seed being the highest, highest seed, will face Mikael from Iceland. And Norway will be facing Denmark. Matthias against Benjamin. And Karen was the lone player who got a medal from all events to medal also in the Masters. Well, I don't know exactly how much it's it going to take time for us to continue, but... I think schedules as quarter overs, practice starts 
So let's say 10 to 15 minutes they start, minutes. and then ten, yeah. 10 minutes practice. Catch you guys in a whiff. Yeah. One more thing, if you're watching on stream from 5 to 8, 9, 12, 29, 32 or 33, 36, those streams will be ending soon. When we come back, it's going to be 17 to 20, 25 to 28 or the mainstream. Tune in there.
semifinals. And in girls, we have a Karen Kaskart Nielsen from Denmark against Melissa Garcia from France. And the other semifinal match is Hannah Masterson from Ireland <laughs> against Sofia Kaskart Nielsen from Denmark. And in the boys' semifinals, we have a Magnus Renqvist from Denmark. against Mikael Aaron Wilhelmsson from Iceland. And the second sem semifinal is Matthias Daniels Otting from Norway. Against Benjamin Kaskart Christensen from Denmark. We will now start 10 minutes warm up and after warm up I will give you a permission to start. Good luck, good bowling.
So, boys and girls, top four remain. We made it to medals. Now let's decide who gets what. The incredible story is that the twins are still in it both and not facing each other. So we could have twin sisters bowling for the gold. We and are ready the to start semifinals. Boys finals. There are two Danes remaining we and they don't play either best face of off each games. other in the semis. So it could uh, be all Denmark go to the finals. finals. Yeah. Good luck, good bowling. Now and I'm going to go ahead and say I think Karen and Sofia are slight favorites in their matches. Though, that is definitely not for certain that it's going to happen. My guesstimate is that this pair, 27 and 8, is going to get brutal pretty quick. Yeah, Benjamin was once again practicing already on the fourth arrow. And Magnus, uh, Magnus. Matthias, pretty good shot there, but it was a little flattish through the pins. So next shot is probably going to give it the business more, curve it more. these eight I think Magnus is the uh, only debutant in the European Youth Championships once again quite weird playing on 25 and 28 and nobody else the Danes shot simultaneously I don't know if it affected Benjamin's spare shot but, but he missed an easy nine pin spare and why would you play simultaneously? I don't understand. Sofia does look quite comfortable there. <laughs> and with that big four by Hannah, it looks looking pretty good for Sofia this game one. Yeah, pretty identical Benjamin shot there, and then Matthias on the first frame on 27. Last 10 for each. That was very powerful ring that Matthias left on 28. Was it? Oh, 28, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. No, the, the, it was weak and the first yeah. frame. That there's the spectators curse. I said Sophia is comfortable, looking pretty good. Five. Great pick up by Melissa there on the washout. And what a response by Hannah. Starting with the uh well, to be honest, I missed if she threw the purple the first few two frames, but now throwing the purple at least. The Sophie made a spare. I don't know if she tried it. On the I left was side, but the same thing. But the spare is a spare. That is quite a lot of curvage there by Benjamin. is bowling with an air pod in right ear. That's a bit weird to me. To be honest, I don't know if it's allowed either. Yeah, I was thinking that if it's allowed. My personal opinion is that it should not be as it's kind of helping you relax. Which is a key factor in bowling too. He was on the driver's seat, but now he's actually falling at least seven pins behind.
That's 24 of the arrows. No. Oh, Sophie missed. Was it 3610 complete? 3610, yeah. Threw it straight to the classic because threw it in. It's not that hard. Yeah, I guess a little bit of uh, middle game jitters. Matthias responds with a double, so it keeps the temp in lead. <laughs> yeah, the back end don't seem too crisp. This uh, the old's been there for a couple hours already. Funny that that seven pin stood up because it actually got a very strong hit from a pin, so they didn't go down, and Matias tripled, so it's already 20. Just gonna put it out then, that's with the spare. It's gonna be a spare. I hope so too. Yeah, Mikhail was in the driver's seat, leading by 10, and now he's actually gonna be almost 30 behind. Anna's had that light pocket hit Swisher. Working perfectly for her all week. And with that strike takes the lead though, Sophie can take it back. With a double of her own. A great spare from the five. Melissa has missed the head pin left twice on that lane 17. Or all time so far for score. And did she spare it from the left side of she the head did. pin? She did. And you would think she didn't try to do it that way. So she keeps missing to the left. I'd say that's a pretty late pay break point for Purple Hammer. True. Yeah, these lanes are getting tight down lane. Completely missed Mikhail's great spare on the uh, split there. Yeah, he converted three, four, six, seven. Pretty good shot there by Hannah. Ball went a little bit too far, and the pins went straight, slightly behind the ten pin. That was good. That was a great shot by Benjamin. Gave a little more time. The shape looked really good. But overall, Matias seems to have a very, very big edge on that match. It's hard to see at this moment Benjamin going to the final. Matias can play more to the right. Yeah, he's he about 16 at the arrow, so he's a good 4-5 boards right. Yeah. So there's some room to move from his own transition to the two, so yeah, he is 
I'd say he's the betting favorite at the moment. But though the stars are aligned for Benjamin today. Yes, yes, last match and this strike again. Yeah, similar thing the first round too. Or maybe it was the first game last round. But there's always going to be that one player every time we play this master type of tournament that who's going to get the breaks that day in every match. Because you only need that to have one match where true. you have the bad breaks and your tournament is over. I'll be honest, I didn't see that turkey coming from Melissa, but she did. And take the 14-pin lead and the strike advantage. Big double there by Mika. Cutting the lead to five. And actually has a chance to take the lead as Magnus is working on a spare. Another light yeah. hit and another strike. She and Stella had that hit, hit working all week. And Magnus, uh, not, not Magnus, Marcus. Marcus. That was way more direct than the last year. And also it looked slower and everything. Wow, that didn't look like a strike, but it did. And she took the lead by five. Kind of irrelevant. Better get it out of the system. That frame actually would have been made more sense to try go right. Exactly. Try something else. And follow what Matthias is doing. If nothing else, at least cause more trans uh, transition. And Melissa fails to convert to 356. Stays in the lead by one. The 13 would have been a lot nicer. Both Hannah and Sophie failed to strike. So Sophie with the spare the there on the 6-10. Chopped it. Oh wow. Don't know why she curved it. And Hannah misses, so Sophie's already won the game then. It's weird that Karen is using plastic on seven pin spares, four sevens. Why would you use curve on that two four and make it a better chance to chop it? Mm, it's a bit weird. I can see that if she did it for a little firmer, but yeah. It's kind of running it out too. That's the lot there by Benjamin. With that, she pretty much forces Karen to double. Yeah, now even with an open Melissa, if she gets nine with two shots, yeah. Karen doesn't dou need a double exempt. Or the strike spare could be a tie. Good light hit for Magnus, and that and crucial is still wide open. And he cannot be set up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was still a field ball. Yeah, I thought it was the first frame. I was like, whoa, no, just testing out. Sophie hasn't had the hardest path to this point. No. First round, 
She had to beat 180 and 150 in the previous round. Emma shot 170 140. Yeah. And now Hannah 181. None of her opponents' game has been 190. Wow. Melissa just missed the happen when spare nine was enough. Crucial strike for Karen. Yes, now I'd say the odds are they're going to tie the match. Yeah, I would and if somebody just go wins, hook it and Karen go after almost. three pins. Yeah. Because by the chance of missing the head pin here, going for it. Then you lose already. Hook it, hook it and go for three. Well, that's plastic. Well, at least she got those three. That's the three. It was really close to two. Yeah. So now, spare for tie, strike for win. Mikhail doubled, Magnus failed, so Mikhail now with one strike wins game one. And Matthias now with a double takes a 22 pin lead, game two already. Okay, that was the game. Yeah, that's going to sting for a while for Melissa. And Hannah's come back to the uh, red ball. But since Sophie and Karen won their first matches, we were one step closer to that twin final. Mikhail here leaving the 10 pin leaves the door open for Magnus with the spare. Magnus still needs a double. I'm gonna say that if Karen loses this match, it, it, I'd say she's 80% to win from here. Just based on her reaction compared to Melissa's. Yes. And her reaction probably won't disappear nearly at all. Very nice spare from Mikhail. Yeah, I was surprised and calm and collected. A lot of these kids would have probably, and I'm sure he was nervous, but it, it didn't, but it didn't show. show up any, anyway. <coughs> It might be his secret tool, the AirPod there. Could be. But this is completely gone. I don't see Benjamin yeah. shooting 200 no, in this Matthias game. looks comfortable yeah. with his reaction. He yeah. knows he's got a couple of boards to hit the 1-3. It's a bit in. It never really shaped, but it was light enough and carried. Yeah, perfect light mixer, yeah. Magnus needs four pins. Melissa and Sophie made those shots simultaneously and only one lane between them. I don't really understand that. I guess it's a question of what you're used to. We're used to more more room around us. Could and be nowadays. Right. Not as much. And if you're used to that then it's good, then you're better it's easier for you to focus. And a lot more things, situations. Yeah, that young kid doesn't really look that nervous, does he? No, and how he plays at the moment, it's at a very high level. Anna, they're sneaking a turkey without me noticing at all. I don't think you noticed either. 
and taking a pretty commanding lead game too. Mm -hmm. Next one would get it up to 30 something already. Yeah, I'm gonna say with that open, it is done. Though, it is quite easy to get ahead of yourself and think about, oh, soon I'm in the gold medal match. But we predicted this already in the halfway of the first game, that Matthias is gonna win that quite comfortably. Yeah, every then, now and then we get lucky. Now he's best at the efforts, but he's doing the right thing, and it came back nice and actually slightly unlucky that he didn't strike. Yeah, the five pin went around the seven pin. And I left that tension, which she already missed in the previous round at least once. I wonder if she remembers that. No, she didn't. I'm a bit surprised Benjamin hasn't tried at all close to where Matthias is now as he clearly doesn't have a ball reaction or any yeah. any area to hit. I think he, he has only moved a couple of boards more left. Totally shutting the possibility down that he might be actually hitting the pocket consistently. That was a bit mean temping there from Melissa. Though luckily for her, Karin has left a big split there already, which more than likely she will fail to make. And Melissa will take the lead. The uh, ball reaction advantage is Mikhail a little bit in this match, Magnus against Mikhail. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be Mikhail winning the first game already. And Mikhail's 10 frame was that half vicious 10 pin. Could have been easily a strike. He was wobbling, but gave a chance to Magnus, and Magnus took his chances. Wasn't that far off for Hannah on that four, two, four, eight, ten. But she still le leads by twenty one. Tickler there for Magnus. The ball, it, to my eye, is not doing the right thing, but hitting it there works. Yeah, it was kind of similar than the decided strike in the first frame, uh, first game. Though so if he does hit slightly oh, did more you see solid, that? yeah, trip two ten and for a double, and that was crucial. Now down by down by eleven would have been twenty one or even more with an open frame. That was a lucky timing. Let's see what Hannah does after her 210 on that lane last time. That's a pretty solid response there. And she got ecstatic for it too. Yeah, it went all over the place. She must have some finished blood in her family tree. Another great shot by Mikhail. Staying in the lead by 10. That's a perfect strike there by Karen. We claimed the lead. Nine points. 
That was a weird. Did you see the pin reaction on, on Sophia's strike? No. I think the ball deflected so much that it almost hit the tempin. Barely taken down the ten pin. Yeah, it was a weird how it came back so late and took it. I guess it's only fair as Sophia had that trip two ten for the strike between strikes there. And Melissa with that miss. So with a strike here, Sophia takes the one pin lead. Pretty good shot though. Balls just not having enough energy as it was a little straighter, it didn't create the right angle for her. Oh, five pin Magnus leaving the light seven pin there, and Michael striking now. The difference is 21, and it could be 31 in a minute. Sophie missed it. Wow. 22. Yeah, nine miss. It's a possible tie. I wonder why Benjamin is looking like that, even though I don't like that singing thing, but the I game like is the way he stepped on the approach at the same time as Michael was almost yes, ready to go. that was that poor was also. Poor of him. And his game was already over and gave that look to that spectator over there, so... Yeah, it was understandable that he... Um, He's frustrated that he the, lost... Uh, the, the reaction to the song because he was singing... But unnecessary yeah, high to, to the spectator and then disturbing Mikhail while he was playing. No good. He got through a pretty good shot, bit firm, and in it in a way, staying in a ring 10. And uh, another light strike for Magnus, yeah. Magnus, uh, that's his bread and butter, that hit. It definitely is. But in the meantime, Hannah won game two, so there's going to be a third game. But Karen looks to be on his on her way to win the second game also. That five it didn't matter as Melissa left the five four ten and failed to convert. And another split to Melissa, so that definitely is impossible for her to come back. This time a perfect strike for Magnus. But it's only 10 points. Yeah, and Mika working a strike, strike here, uh, sorry, on a spare strike here is crucial because it's losing count. Would be bad. And also, then Magnus could have a chance, chance to lead. Melissa, oh, third open there, and uh, that match is over. Yeah. It's 40. A bit outside, but the way pins went flying after the hit. It it was great. Yeah, I don't I don't dislike what his ball is doing down lane. No. It's 
So Karen's gonna hit the bucket five pin on the left lane. Solid eight and flat seven on the left lane again. I think it's safe to say the lane left 17 is tighter down lane by a big margin. Great shot by Sophie. See that? The three pin that stood at six pin? Or did, did the six pin just move? I didn't see that. I was watching Magnus's shot and this time it stayed too light, leaving it too late. Yeah, it felt like it was a matter of time that it doesn't see the lane enough. Ball shining up or lanes carrying down. Yeah, it goes down the lane pretty nicely, no matter what line it actually goes. Because chances are good at the moment. For this game, yeah. And in general, I, like we've talked already in the first game, it looked like that Mika is going to win. It seems his ball reaction is quite a lot better than uh, Magnus. Or as our friend Olli called him, Maganus. Maganus, yes. In the press room just. With that nine, Karen is guaranteed at least a tie this game, mathematically. I gotta say, there's a funny conversation in the comments. For you interested, you might have to use Google Translate. I will not say what it says. Wow, that's perfect. But as we nearly, know, nearly too perfect. But as we know, yeah, I was just about to say in bowling. You can look like 100 million bucks, and after five frames, it's totally gone. Yeah, he still can only lose one pin there, Mikael, from here on out, if Magnus strikes out. But this shot here in the ninth is, is has, has to, to be a strike, strike. yeah. And I again snuck on me and did a turkey there without me noticing anything. I saw the first frame, and since I've been oblivious. This is Sophie is struggling at the moment. It definitely looks like Hannah is the favorite. I, I, I just don't know how that happens all the time. That was even more light than most of his strikes have been. And it kept fading away and still struck. Yeah, it makes no sense to me. weird situation though that, that struck he kind of has to go with that otherwise he could be trying something now wasn't that good of a shot but still a yeah, bit early a bit slow maybe and still dead flush but held nicely yeah you cursed her Okay, off to the third game between Magnus and Mikhail. Uh-oh, missing the head pin from wow. the left. Especially when your girl, uh, girl, your opponent gave you a little chance to put pressure on. And gives you more. But that is a horrific 
spare shot to make. Yeah, that was a weird, um, weird choice of lines. I think they are talking now how to make a spare, but of course you go with plastic. Keeping in mind that she missed the 3610 with plastic before. Yeah, but if you hook it, you can make a spare. And given that she's using thumb, she's hardly going to do a backup. The hybrid plastic and, and hooked at it, or released like a hook shot. Not that often with a 7 2 you extend your lead, but Hannah did. So 270 for Mikhail. Yeah, that one ring 10 away from gold medal match. Is it just two pin? I think so. No, two eight. Two eight. It's not a that lot easy. harder. I think she missed it, and it, then it just never hooked down line. Now a seven ten for Sophie. Nice pickup and extends her lead to, uh, what's that, 36. Do you think Hannah is shooting 15 pound ball? That's With two hands, the they should. I think they have enough power to shoot 15. Yeah, and especially if your main balls quite often is your thing, then more than likely. Yeah. <laughs> Mongols have had shots like that a couple of times. Most of the strikes have been those light hits, but... You might have missed, moved a little bit right there. Yeah, that shot looked way better than reaction-wise. wait for Sophie as well. And since it's already 36, it's looking bleak for her. It is, and this is not the easiest pair right now. Well, it's easier than the previous two. <laughs> that is true. This shot here is really big for Magnus. Took too much. Okay, that's over. He hasn't had that part of hit that part of the pocket in a while. No, it's been always lighter or dead flush three, four As times. We expected that's going to happen when he hits it there. And I think Mangus has a very large area where he keeps on leaving flat tens. Exactly. He likes the shot. And it did not hook. Did it move that four pin a little? Uh, Improving the chance of a chop a I little think bit more. It just wobbled. That spare is impossible either way. <laughs> yeah, it's written chop me all over. Yeah, it. It's guaranteed. It's supposed to be easy, but it's just unmakeable. Because unless you don't aim right towards it, try to hit the right side, you keep missing the four pin. Yeah, I'd rather go for the <laughs> three, six, nine, ten <coughs> every day. Yeah, and if you go t straight towards, you're going to go straight towards and chop it. And they are hooking it. Well, 
I guess why I look at it that way is also because three six nine ten is you are allowed to miss it, but four eight and you're supposed not supposed to. Bahana spared that his was, bucket. Every now and then we call it strikes, light hits, bucket crumblers, but that was a proper bucket crumbler. Yeah. On the spare shot. Yeah, Forty seven pins, yeah, and four pin has went to strike here. To yeah. right. Yeah, and the bottom of it took the eight pin, I think. Yeah. Sophie here has to strike. 198 though, max. Not um, impossible to win with. Again, almost light enough. But that ball isn't showing much of signs of going left. No. Oh, that was a good shot. She's moving to using the oil more instead of curving it. That's a lot of nine there for Hannah. Yeah, very fortunate. I do wonder though if, if Sophie meant to bowl that direct or just get it right earlier. In either case, this next frame has to be a strike again. As I do assume Hannah is going to make this two pin here. Yeah, if she does, then definitely needs to be a strike, because he's all high 170s with two empty frames anyway. Yeah, if Hannah gets 8 or 9 now on the first ball, she's in the 180s guaranteed pretty much. Yeah. I give you a task, Pasi. I'm interested in what is he, Mikhail, listening to. So if you remember, ask him, please. <laughs> I think he's not listening to anything, it's just in his ear. Could be. Then it's kind of odd if it's only in one ear. Okay, game over. Yeah, that's definitely game over now. So we do not get twin finals here. Second week, ten in a row for Mongo. So in the ladies' final, or girls' final, it is number two seed, Karen, versus um, six seed, number Hannah. six seed, Hannah. Actually decent numbers, two and six. say it's more common to happen on the girls' side. There's more higher seed going through. As the top 16 is way more closer, I'd say in talent level, all the way around to 16th place. In the, in the boys' section. In the boys' section, yeah. yeah. Since that Mikael's split, I would say this is pretty close to being 50-50 at the moment. Yeah, 13 pins, which is, we give or take two doubles with a big count difference. Though this shot needs to be a high count first shot. Now that's direct. Yeah, I got the feeling that the door is closing more and more after each shot for him. It does. That fast eight there, the four seven. No, the difference is eleven, which is actually huge for him because that could have easily been a nine count. Uh oh, and he paid for that. Missed it completely. It's unlucky the eight pins there actually. And I, I quite don't uncommon think with urethane. 
I haven't seen him use backup on spares at all. Well, I would hope he doesn't for this one either with the eighth in there. But he could make a spare with backup. With your thing, getting the eighth pin from there is, is, is tough. Oh, of course, yeah. And he's going I traditionally. I wonder if the hook would have been enough if it hit the perfect place. Same here. I, I'm that was so, so direct. Yeah. He might have made the 210, but not to get the 8 pin, maybe. So now 23 pins to Magnus. So a strike here would be massive, as then he couldn't lose as much count. True. No strikes for the last four shots each. It's a good shot. That was actually a good shot because he needs to make good shots at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is too much, not too much room either side. Yeah, right or left. a bit further right to shape it. And, and perfect line. Perfect. Wonder what happened because he was playing pretty nicely and now it's. I guess he's ended up in the zone where uh, Magnus started. Though and also, he's, he's shot being penalized wise every shot. And shot wise, it, it, it's been terrible. For yeah, him. he's been short on every every release. And of course, yeah, paying the pi price on every shot. Thirty-six, then. Yeah, it bounced from the gutter. A strike here for Magnus. Then, yeah, then he only Mikhail needs to stay clean. Terrible trouble. Well, it might be a lot harder to bowl now that there's nothing else going on. Where did that shot come from? It was a great shot. It read the lane early, but it stayed there nice. Yeah. Long. And the pin reaction, perfect. Now Mikael's ball is doing what Magnus ball did before. <laughs> and with that non-strike, Magnus here with a good count. Can afford one open. Nice pickup, because that spare is not easy. But again, off pocket and got a six. He he is definitely paying the price. A strike here seals it, because then an eight or nine count of next shot is enough, even if Mikael strikes out. That was definitely not the same line. Well, that eight count was still okay, even though it's a baby split and not too easy to spare, but six would have been worse. For sure. That was a pretty good shot. It was. Even though the ball doesn't read the lane, it didn't read the, the right uh, thing. As good as it did earlier, but that shot was still yeah, yeah, very, very he threw good. It really good. No spare. Oh, now Mikael should go and rush or go first and strike. 
It might maybe even give it a little business. But that 8-1 was okay. Imagine if there was 9-pin also. Yeah. And taking 2, it would have been big difference compared to this situation. That's got a chance. Again, a really good shot. I thought it was going to hook more often. And he definitely took it a shorter approach. and tried He waited on it. Great balance. It didn't yank on it. Great shot. That's a pretty good shot, too. Slightly in, but it, had, it looked and, like it's going to hit the pocket. And important. Whatever Bikal does, spare nine is enough. Exactly. The strike there is really crucial, not not only for the double chance, but the fact that he won't lose any count on any spare now. That's true. And how big is that seventh, uh, sixth frame spare shot for uh, Mikael? Pretty good shot. Bit further in and ring ten. There we have it. Magnus goes through. Well, I take that he gets four pins with two shots. Magnus and Matthias in the final, and Karen. Hannah and Karen. And I assume they start playing right away after we finish this, and players are ready behind the lanes. If you're on the streams of, of the particular streams of, of the boys and girls, the finals will be in between these here, and so. I believe uh, either of those two pairs there. I think 1920 was in use now also, right? It's so 21 to 24. 24, 24, But I guess we'll take that small break and we'll come back as soon as the practice concludes of those final games. And girls and boys semifinal results. Karen Karkat Nielsen from Denmark win Melissa Garcia from France 2 0. Hannah Masterson from Ireland win Sofia Kaskat Nielsen from Denmark 2 1. And in boys, Magnus. Rehnqvist from Denmark win Mikael Aaron Wilhelmsson from Iceland 2-1. And Matthias Daniels from Norway win Benjamin Kaskad Christensen from Denmark 2-0. And we will soon start the final matches.
We are ready to start girls and boys masters final matches. We are still playing best of three matches. The bowlers will have a 10 minute warm up. And after that, I will give you a permission to start. Hello guys, a Finnish uh, Twitch streamer, Turun Pug, 40,000 followers, right? Uh, yeah, it uh, went over 40,000 actually yesterday. So, and yeah. what's cool with him, he is a new, old new bowler. Old new bowler, I like that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. he has a challenge or what you would call it? I would call it a challenge, Sami Konsteri, uh, I don't know if the... Uh, if you know that, you know Sami Konsteri, but yeah, big I've finish. Seen him once or twice. Once or twice, you see him. Uh, he offered me a chance to train. I got six months' time. I started with final. zero experience in bowling Karen, uh, about uh, three months ago. Denmark, and uh, six months' time to Masterson practice to finish Ireland. championships. And um, now we are halfway and uh, looking good, looking good. Very hard, very hard. And boys New game, final, but loving it, loving it. Exactly. Exactly. Bowling, it looks so From easy, but Denmark. it's so hard. Yeah. And the more you uh, learn, the the more you think you know less. Yeah, yeah, exactly, e exactly. I've been f finding that out. But uh, the people, the bowling people in Finland, everybody loves to help. Everybody's cheering. Everybody's uh, giving advices, and uh, the whole. 
bowling community has been supporting this 100 yeah, percent so within my 30 years of, of traveling and so or nearly 30 years yes yeah. bowling community it's like a family yeah like, you'll yeah. never feel like you're left out and, but, and uh, my challenge is ending in two months and I can, uh, so you're getting nervous? Sure, no, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Of course, the, the Finnish championships are coming, and but uh, I can already say that that after the after the six months that I will continue bowling. So we will be seeing uh, hopefully in the future as well. I'm sure we will. Yeah. So you've been here today watching the girls bowl. Exactly. Um, my other coach Jarno said that this is the. Uh, championship or uh, place to pl place to go because um, there is a lot of cheering going on and I was like oh, okay let's see but yeah it's first, the first when is I, amazing right exactly when I walked in I was like oh this this is what bowling should be people cheering everybody is cheering to their own team and uh, the atmosphere is simply great here so who's going to win the girls and the gold, boys gold medal no of course the Finland of course the Finland <laughs> yeah. I think that's perfect way to finish exactly thank you Turun Puk. Oh. what was your first uh, competition oh uh, in Tali uh, we started with my coach uh, Sami said that uh, I was practicing I was Two weeks after I started bowling, and Sami was that now it's time to go to the competition. And the, my first competition was here at the Bowlmasters European Tour, <laughs> so it was a quite Easy quite start a, to your you, competitive no, no. career. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was making a live stream when I when I started here the, the first first day on the on the match, and um, people asked me, I'm, uh, uh, "Boogie, are you nervous?" And I was like, "No, I'm I'm pretty confident." So it's like okay, first time, but it's all right and. At the practice, a couple, a couple throws in, and then I was like, there's something wrong here. It doesn't feel the same. I looked at my hands. I, was, I taped my wrong, wrong thumb, so that, I guess I was a little random, bit nervous. That's actually more common than people think. Oh, exactly, when we exactly. get nervous, we do weird crazy, stuff. Crazy stuff. Crazy Thank stuff. you, Thank Let's you. Thank you. Let's go back to the uh, metal, metal matches.
So it's time for the finals. Masters finals for boys and girls. In the girls final, Karen meets Hannah. And in the boys final, it's Magnus against Matthias. Karen, gold in singles, silver in all events, and now at least sing, uh, silver. And was in, it a bronze uh, medal with her twin sister in doubles? In doubles, yes. So she has medaled in every, every category. Every event, yes. We are ready to start at least single girls and every boys individual. master finals. Again, you can play Denmark best of three games. Good luck, event. good bowling. I think they bowl against Finland if they're not in the semifinals. Yeah, so she has medaled in every, every event, which is quite impressive. I think it would have gone down anyway, so the messenger just made sure it w wasn't going to stay up. He liked his shot, but it was a little flattish. I guess they are getting tighter and tighter in down lane. And he's throwing pretty firm. And these lanes were oiled right after noon. Yeah, so three and a half hours ago. Yeah, play resumed one o'clock. So those lanes probably were oiled 12, 15 or something. It would be funny if they bowled on wrong pairs and the boys bowled on a girl's pattern and, and vice versa. I don't know if that's funny, but <laughs> I, I would think it's <laughs> I funny. I would be bad. It would be bad, but I would still think it's funny. I remember in the past when we had this dual lane tournaments and those lanes were marked over there short long long short but still occasionally some players missed it and it looked kind of stupid it, you played short pattern from the fourth arrow and uh oh yeah i saw it multiple times by very those accomplished bowlers too but those were players mistakes i can ever remember no, it was not it the oil it, it was, was not the oil yeah it was just uh, ignorance of the bowlers. Great shot. Great shot. Great reaction to the defense. So her break point is quite late, which might get into problems later. And a great shot there by Magnus, too. Again, it seems like they are throwing simultaneous. Okay, Hannah stayed there. It went to the approach at the same time. Yeah, Matthias is not the one to stand there for too long. And why would he stand over there? Because we can see that he's trusting his game. Yeah, he knows that a decent shot's going to hit the 1-3. Yes. And even a horrible shot like he threw in the 23, he still made it back. And I got a reasonably light, lucky and light hit there for a strike. Okay, this time the tension went down a little bit lucky, but still, just the way the ball goes down the lane, you could sense that this chance of a strike is pretty high. They're using a ball that's reasonably round motion-wise, bowling fairly direct with that kind of power. Yeah. It turns into strikes quite often. almost at the same time. It wasn't that far off that that four pin would have stayed up between two and five. 
Magnus' body language is telling me that he's not confident at his ball reaction at all. Even though he started with a triple, but yeah. still. Like, he's not losing confidence. I think that was the second time I saw her miss the seventh pin. The first one was obviously in that double semi-final where they lost because of that. I think she's had a couple here and there. She struck so much also at times that I forget. Yeah, because you leave a lot of seven pins, obviously. Big a chance to miss those. That's why only Pakonen did it miss a single ten pin in his career because there was all, all, always more pins on the deck. We're gonna give all some shit, we might give him some praise too. He shot a 300 at the boost team in the European Championships. I think there is two 15. Finnish guys yes. to do that. Kim Kim that and then the back on it. Yeah. Booster 300. And then later that day we uh, even won the team gold in Alberg. So we call him Golden Tourist. Yeah, that final was... You really crushed your opponents. Yeah, by one or two yeah, pins. Uh, one pin by uh, <laughs> beat England 1100 to 1099 or so. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good final to be a part of, especially on the finishing on that side. But there were some Finnish people watching and the atmosphere was great, what I've heard. It was amazing. This is actually much more fun, even if you lose, but there's great atmosphere. Because I always feel that in Germany, where we lost to USA in the team final, that was much more fun than in Vegas, where we won. It, it wasn't as bad as thing as thingy as like it was great bowling by both teams and and the atmosphere was it was yeah amazing incredible. Though there's some wishing Im room for improvement of the schedule wise there, as I think we finished the finals at 11:15 p.m. or something and, and Masters started, started Masters 8 a.m. Yeah. Patrick Allen was, he had flexed his muscles pretty nicely and that's why he shot 780 for three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that bugger, he beat me too. <laughs> Round of eight, I believe. Yeah, right after me. Then he lost his mojo in the final against Chris. You can <laughs> say that, that he lost his mojo. Enough of that. Magnus here with a great double and takes the lead by one at least. Maybe even 12. No, great cover up by Matthias. I just like that back up spare. It gives you so much more room on the spare. And also when you're using urethane, it's so much more predictable how the ball goes down the lane. If you were using, let's say, any kind of reactive it could read the lane different. Oh, it hooked or oh, it didn't hook. Yeah, it's not as... Uh, That's much more predictable. Yeah, it's not so important, the direction of release. Now, that's a huge break there. Still trailing, but six spins is a lot less than 16. Nine the spin. Um, nine spare would have been a lot worse. Okay, he's getting tighter and tighter. He was sure that he was coming back and he barely made it. But we have to give Magnus credit to hanging in there in every yeah. game. It seems like that he's the underdog based on reaction and he just keeps on winning. Yeah, that light pocket is his friend today. Definitely. Another great shot by Hannah. Could have easily struck. Well, that was not her best effort. Yeah, I thought so. It went way too much to the left. I think she dropped a little bit too little. Soft on the release side. Yeah, they rushed it a little bit and didn't quite make it in time. Yeah, 
It's impressive. And with that open, Cameron actually gives Hanna a very good yeah. chance to win the game. Yeah, nine count here is it's massive. Cargan only shoot 202. Okay, we're shooting about the same. She's shot pretty much every round. First round was around 200. Second round she had two high games and then previous round again, two 200 games. Good. He shot there, but Matias just... Yes, he's 19 behind, though. If Magnus misses, there's a great possibility of a tie of 247. That was perfect. Probably his best shot of the game. Just have to give him a lot of credit for his actions today. Batia still gives a little slight hope. Ooh, ooh. Interesting. That's the third time she's left the 2 8 there. 2 8 10 there on this 21. Count here is basically irrelevant. So she might as well go with the backup spirit that she's trying already twice. Yeah. Hardly not enough speed on that one if it would have been on the right area. But like you said, the count was irrelevant. Oh. Look to me, there's a little further left on that spare shot, which gives her less angle to get the 8-pin and the 2 to get yeah, to too the much 10. to the left. Yeah, I think she, she moved the wrong way. It, it, it is, in my mind, impossible to sneak it there exactly. from that spot. Mark here forces Karen to strike once. Wow. This game just took a U turn. Now Karen with the mark forces Hannah to spare. And a strike already gets the game pretty much. Well, I didn't think 246 would be a loser on this game here on the boys' side. No. And especially this way. Quite nice. Yeah, that win was handed to her. And with that, I don't see. Uh, well, Karen's going to be the big favorite for the gold medal. It's funny. Oh, wow. Now she was more further to the right and hooked it, and it could have taken out the eight pin. And actually, okay, Karen is throwing it so direct to the urethane. But she still needs seven spare or better. Yeah. Eight, so eight one. one or nine count here. But that was weird that he was more right. Without the eight pin. Yeah. <coughs> but maybe she did learn from previous frame. That interaction looks funny to me. Yeah, she missed the single pin and the near bucket thing. She must feel pretty good about that win. True. And with the struggles Hannah on the left has on the left lane, that second frame next game is going to be crucial. That shot by Matias, I don't think it was because of the lane. It just a, was a poor shot. It was all the way to the left immediately. Rush it again. This is probably the yes. first time girls' match is actually finishing later than the boys' match. See some aggression in Matthias' spoke body language there. So 
Well, do you think he might start the wrestle match with Joachim Bean? Sure. Of course, depends on what's going to happen in the second game. And Joachim there, the coach of the Norwegian team. Obviously from Sweden. I think this is the first year he took over the youth. I think it, this is the first year. I think he's the youth head coach. Oops. Down, carry down. Yeah, in his hand. That's one of those things that could easily switch the mentality of your opponent. Although I think it doesn't have any kind of indication that Magnus is starting to struggle. It was just I one was time. Just a poor yeah, poor shot. Mis mishap. That's it. Yeah. But Matthias definitely will get some fire from that. Oh. That was not a good shot. Oh, the lucky break. Yeah, that's not uh, leaving the tempin. Really important. Also for the count side too. <laughs> it was close to being a four count. And Magnus goes back to his bread and butter, light mixer and a strike. About that Hannah shot, you sometimes see that seven pin stay there also, but the, what's more weird is sometimes you leave eight pin over there. Great, great pickup. And with a strike under, no last count. It looked quite weak from her hand, although the hit was perfect, light hit. And yeah, the pins actually flew faster than it seemed that it, they should yeah. have. And she was actually quite unlucky that it wasn't a strike, but the release was like a little bit weaker than normally. And with that, we're tied, I assume. That and is as flush as they go. And we can say that that four pin miss hasn't distracted Magnus at all. Nope. He's showing that he's, he's got the light pocketed perfect. Then he skips the uh, platinum zone and goes yeah. solid. That's great pocket control. There was only a few of those flat tens against Mikhail in the previous yeah, I think match. Only one, right? Two times on the right hand oh, line, sorry. 26. But only twice. Yeah. It's definitely not seeing the lane enough. And Hannah's actually reaction is too much round. Yep. He should stay longer behind the ball. I think she's afraid to move right based on what's happened all week. But now bowling left is she should have made a good go. I think if this is not a spare, I think Karen wins. Just amazing performance. That was great. Yeah, Matthias is definitely not as confident as he felt before, or look, doesn't look as confident as he did before. But he was also playing with the lead in both games against Benjamin. No, because it. He goes too much rounded and it doesn't pick up at all. We should be using the purple on the left lane and the uh, red ball on the right lane. And this is the moment. Why stick with that ball over there? There's no risk. You need to do something, otherwise you're going to be guaranteed to lose.
Will these things go quick? Best out of three, and it is the European Championships final. So it might be hard to keep your thoughts on Bay. The coach, in this case, yeah, should, should be, be the yeah. one relax and think about this. Exactly. Pull her aside and, and talk through what's happening. Yeah, take sort of like a timeout. And Magnus here with a bad count actually gives the lead to Matthias. Or switch balls. There we go, back to the purple. Missed that again. By a mile, actually. And that's a similar kind of spare shot. Pretty identical, and he, yeah. And he threw it right twice already. So at least there is some technical problems and issues for him at the moment. See on Karen's face that she's starting to understand this. This is a we're there. Shot by Magnus in the next round, not this yet. Pretty much has to be a strike. Great shot. Decent reaction, slightly too far. In ten. That was pretty rare shot from Magnus that it actually was in that region where the six pin would tap down to 10. Usually it's lighter or dead flush. That was a lucky break. Yeah, that was a bit uh, crabby. Could have been way worse than that. just a four pin. Good count and easy so spare. 37 pins. Difference, six, four frames to go. That spare hand, I can still shoot 222, which then would mean Karen needs a double and clean. Well, with that, Magnus can only shoot 222, which means Magnus, oh, sorry, Matthias just needs to stay clean with a decent count. And that was the first ring time he's left after first round, because first round I can't remember how he played, but round two and three I do remember. Not a bad situation if you don't lo leave those for a couple rounds in a row. True. Or it gives you better odds of winning. This time he adjusted with a spare ball. But that's a different shot to that side of the lane. And most of the people actually do struggle going to the left. because you kind of have to throw against your body. Yeah. Close out your arm and... Uh, shoulders and it's a different one good tip is to visualize that you're walking towards the pins instead of trying to force it there with your yeah. arm and then your body does it automatically anyway not her best shot so far that one's kind of tough to Really focus there as she feels like Karen probably will get to 220. At least five or six times from this situation. Wow. He stepped back because he wanted to go all the same time as Hannah. Barring any miracles, boys' final is going the distance. Who's your pick for the win? Matthias. Same here. We did that against Magnus last game, round two, though. So we'll see how bad we are at this. Yeah, I think we picked Mikhail to win it like 15 times during the game. And yeah. <laughs> 
He showed that we're stupid. So that that's is it. it. Yeah. Can't say that I'm surprised that she won this gold medal. No. It was close for her picking all three individuals. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Kyra was close to winning all three. Yeah. Just finishing second behind Fiona. And we thought that was the kind of the guaranteed one. Yeah. He was supposed to be. Oh, sorry, yeah, the easiest. Off them. Well, I don't think 2-8-10 has been made in the finals before on the girls' side. Yeah, obviously, yeah, I know. Probably History not on the boys' side either. Telling that, but that's a good guess that it was the first time. Because that actually might be one of those things that turns viral. European Championships final. Super mm -hmm. split spare. Wink, wink to all the social media guys. With that eight, Matias can not lose this game. And I assume he hits one of those. As he has about half of the lane with his backup to hit it. Yeah, with backup he can miss it completely. Well now, irrelevant. I wonder if he's gonna try something else on the field though. Actually both of these both. was just checking those scores that were played against Karen and it's been cut quite easy path for her. Not quite the hardest path, no. 186, 144, 173, 180 and in the morning. And on the second round Kai said 192 and 211. So 211, once over 200. And that's those things you need against you on these things. Yeah, we know what happened to Fiona, the all event yeah. gold medalist. 530 something. 253, 279 against you, isn't yeah. it? Nice. In the past, in Finland, we used to play these ranking events where the top would always play a round robin game. And uh, Ari Halme in Järvenpää, he had the best scratch average for those 11 games and he lost all of them. <laughs> that sounds amazing, but it, it did happen. Best average and lost every game. That's because he only bowls on house shots. But that was <laughs> a ranking event and. No, that's it's really. It's so unlikely. It can only happen once in a lifetime. Amazing big week by Garen. Medal every distance. Two goals, one silver in the individuals. A medal with her twin sister in doubles. Wow. Okay, it's two, two golds, one silver and two bronzes. Uh -huh. And that doubles actually was close to... I'd say they would have won if... If she didn't miss that seventh yes. there in the tenth round. And also a great week by Hannah, two medals, 300 in the last game of qualifying in teams. Silver here, not too yeah. shabby. When Hannah came to these championships, if somebody would have told her before the tournament started that you're going to get a silver medal in the Masters, he would have said probably, oh, that sounds okay. Okay, I'll take it. I thought I was getting gold, but yeah. I'll, t I'll take the silver. <laughs> I'm not going to gamble it, so give it to me already.
think that was a pretty great shot there. He looked calm, he waited for it. The lane is carrying down the ball, it's probably shining up. The overall presence of Matias is yeah, much calm more confident yeah. Yeah. than it was a game ago. Yeah, he was when like he was more confident the first few frames. Slightly lack of confidence there a little bit, but now he seems like he's on track again. And I think this, if he strikes next frame, he'll be feeling pretty darn good. Do you happen to know what that FZ Forza means on those shirts? I do know. I think it's a sports uh, brand. I think they do badminton clubs or something, right? Or maybe clothing. And that FZ is also in the front of the shirt. I think Team Denmark's had it for a number of years. But my guess is it's apparel or something. It's sports related, I assume. So it's not the ad. It's the brand of the shirt. So I do feel like I've heard of FC Porza badminton uh, rackets and, sh and, and stuff. Yeah. So the badminton, badminton brand. Ooh. That counts. Not great. Great shot. But now Magnus is starting to see those ringers. Yeah. I think that would have struck if to my eyes it looked like three pin was slightly off that left the, made the six pin go quite high there. Joachim there behind on the stands has taken his jacket off, so he's down to business series now. I believe the Danish coach is called Casper here. He's a tall fellow. As he makes Jimmy look tiny. Mm -hmm. And obviously Matthias is not that tall guy, at least not yet. That looked he that way was too straight, but that was a lot helped. more direct line. Yeah, and we can be pretty sure that he wasn't trying to go that straight. I doubt that. But obviously, it gives him confidence. Oh, there's that kind of shot on the lane. And as the last one didn't didn't recover, I guess he was a little afraid of getting it right, even though it's a different lane. And the previous strike was still a very very light hit on frame two. That's actually unfortunate because the shots have been pretty good. It just the ball goes down the lane the wrong way, so your pocket is getting really, really small. But the shots have been great. Yeah. Let's see what move Matthias does, or if he's just going to try and throw it better. I think he should actually move one further in, shape it a little bit more, a little softer. And Magnus there, his ball looked pretty good, but the, it's a slightly too much angle through the pins somehow. But it's not over yet, because Definitely I think not. Definitely not. Matthias last time 2-4-5, and I don't think he's that overly confident going over there. What should I do? No, definitely not. No, I, that's exactly what I meant. He should probably move one in or two and slow down a little bit and shape it a little further right. 
and use that hang as, as a hold. Well, that was good. And the reason why Matias has the edge over Magnus is just that pure power. Strike here is really important. Because if or when, probably, Matthias misses, he will lose one pin and count. So 256 tie would be likely, not likely, but greatly more possible then. Wow. That was He knew it from the get-go. Whenever bowlers stand there solidly in their balance on the one leg like that, normally it, it's going to hit the one three like that. So nineteen. And with a strike, it's only nine. So now it's actually in the Magnus' hands. So I do not predict that neither of these strike out from here. Actually, the last three frames, Magnus has been the more confident one. Four. Oh, wow. Well, the result was in poor. With that being a strike, that eight, I wish it was a nine. Okay, with Matthias using that backup, it's impossible to chop that. But no, what I mean with that is the count, because now... But uh, I was yeah, talking yeah, in sorry. general, yeah. that kind of Brooklyn weirdo over there, then you go and chop it. <laughs> Why <laughs> do I bowl? <laughs> That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, with Matthias back up, it's impossible to chop it. This rack again looks a little wide between three and six here, so the tempting could easily stand here. Back to that good light hit, and Magnus takes the one point lead. A decent shot by Magnus, but he was definitely not sure that if he's going to make it back or not. Well, that was a good break, just a two pin. Although that hit and the way the ball went down the lane, 210, you don't leave it. It was not a possible no. Didn't have enough angle to do that. But now we have a decent chance. The final game in the third game go to the 10th frame decider. Actually, it would be odd that there wouldn't be at least a, some kind of theory before the 10th frame. That's the way to do it. Move, yeah. I think he moved one in and gave a little more time. And he knew that it's going to be pretty good. And also the pin showed it. Six pin took down the ten the way it should. Last time was the Brooklyn shot. Yeah. He thought it was... 110 or something. Yeah, that, that's a lot of nines. Surprisingly in recovered, the and it could have been a strike. And keep, more importantly, still in the lead. True. Because if he knew that it was going to come back, that was weird kind of celebration moves that he did there. Good spare. Yeah, the and we have to remember 
four pin and two for five missed both on the right side I don't know if he was thinking about it but definitely had some problems with that shot before I guess Matthias will be very reasonably loud if this is a strike here you mean Arton people near me loud or just normal loud yes I think it was a bit further right than he wanted, but he, he clearly wanted to put it right. It picked up, hit the light enough, and that was the move he needed to make. And with his power, those hits have been pretty much every time struck. At least a nine count for Magnus. Of course, a strike would be better, but at least nine count. That was probably his best shot this game. Third time he left that kind of ring. It's funny that he had the turkey with, let's say, not the better shot of this, this game, and he's left it champion three times with her. At least he, with his three her best shots. And even though he missed it in the eighth, mm. that seven pit could have easily been a strike. But he's showing how, in bowling. When you strike, you're supposed to put them in in line so that you get more points. Three strikes and he's 14 over. Good spare. So one strike here by Mateus, and we have a gold medal winner. And the last time in the eighth frame, his strike was perfect. It was, yes. Six pin took out the ten violently. And there on the stripes, we see Oli that we mentioned a couple times here. Mr. Booster. Looking at the Instagram, I think. No, he's uh, filming for um, social media. Again. And he told us before that he, he did that. Were you bowling in Norway or somewhere? Yeah, <coughs> did, yeah the one he had this morning when he <coughs> did that at the foul line. Yeah. It's also a, actually a good thing that you know when not to shoot. That was a lot. A little too much of eagerness there. But the way he makes his spare shots with backup, I don't see that being anything but a spare. Luckily for him, the seven pins are not there. Yeah. Like easily with that reaction could have been there. So here, a strike here to make the spare a lot tougher. So now spares enough. Magnus had obviously had a chance to double and win. Looks pretty good. good. Spare, yeah. That's keeping the tie at least. No fouls. Keep it on the lane. Did it Jesper Svensson sometime it in was the past? In Slovenia or Slovakia, yeah. In the European tour. Needed like two count or something to win. Lost, and he I fouled. think he lost by four. But uh, I wasn't there and I've heard stories that. Yeah, but he fouled. No comment. But he fouled, yeah. Yes, that was the final conclusion. Yeah. Of course, and the they winner of the, the Boys Masters, Matthias Daniel, Daniel Daniel shooting that double Norway. against Pete Weber and then needing seven to win and then he cut it the last one. And in the first final, Karen Kerkhoff is Norway, Nielsen. Matthias. From Denmark, the Masters. Masters from, from Karen Ireland. also in the girls' side, winning medals in every event and two individuals, gold medals. This kind of saved Norway's championships, especially on the boys' side. I don't think they had their best days. I think the Masters the medal presentation is going to start pretty much in a I'd couple of minutes. Yeah. They just bring out the podium. And it's been a long week with you, Osko. Yeah, I'm it's sorry for that. No, thank you, Pasi. Thank you, everybody, for all listening. I think you're going to go and do your uh, interviews. Yeah, those interviews, both with Karen and...
Because I'm lazy, I'm going to say thank you, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And see you guys at the Hammer Challenge in August, September, and then in the Ballmaster. Yeah, those are the two European Tour events that are played here in Tali. Ballmaster has been played 50 years, but Hammer Challenge received a great, actually, acknowledgement when it was first played last August, so obviously Tali is going to keep on organizing that great event too. With the formats in different categories and the matches. Yeah, it's it a was, different it kind of It was interesting to watch. And so, and extra place for youth and seniors and so yeah. on, so see you guys there. Yeah. We will start the medal ceremonies as soon as we are ready, so we are a little bit ahead of the schedule.
the medal ceremony of the girls masters will start. The medals are presented by the President of the Finnish Bowling Federation, Olli Hossi. Bronze medal, Melissa Garcia, France. And the coach, Guy Selain. Also, the bronze medal, Sofia Kaskart Nielsen, Denmark. And the coach, Jimmy Dan Mortensen. Silver medal, Hannah Masterson, Ireland. And the coach, David Staines. And the gold medal, Karen Kakart Nielsen, Denmark. And the gold, Jimmy Dan Mortensen. Please rise for the national anthem of Denmark.
perdu les Français. Mais le coach il me fait mourir s'il est comme ça. Ah non. So, Karen, second time in the winner's circle and also your second individual gold medal. Your thoughts about this? My thoughts about this? Well, I can't even think right now because I'm just overwhelmed by everything. I can't even believe I did it again. I'm impressed by myself. <laughs> yeah. The one important thing was that nobody did shoot those high, high games against you today because I was kind of like feeling a little sad for Fiona that she won all events and then got beaten up by 5.30 for two. But obviously still, even though nobody shot that high against you, you still needed to beat them. Were there any moments that you felt extra pressure or did you trust yourself all the, all the time? Well, even though I was behind in some of the games, I just think to myself you know it's never over until the dust ball is shot so I just kept my calm and I and then then I I came back in those games and yeah so okay like you said you are overly thrilled enjoy the moment and have a happy uh, have a great evening and enjoy the moment yes thank you so much <laughs> I was almost about to say happy life <laughs> but hopefully you The medal ceremony of the boys' masters will start. The medals are presented by the President of the Finnish Bowling Federation, Olli Hossi. Bronze medal, Mikael Aaron Wilhelmsson, Iceland. And the goats, Mark Hedhorn. Also, the bronze medal, Benjamin Gaskard Christensen, Denmark.
and the coach Kasper Astrup Johansen. Silver medal, Magnus Rehnqvist, Denmark. And the gold, Kasper Astrup Johansen. The gold medal, Matthias Danielsen, Otting, Norway. And the gold, Joachim Biel. Please rise for the National Anthem of Norway.
So, Matthias, European champion. Yeah. Do you like the sound of that? Yeah, I love it. I feel good. Did you have any kind of a bad moments today or did you trust yourself the whole day because we were watching you play every every single game and I, I thought you looked confident the rest of the way. Yeah, I felt good the whole day. I tried to slow work it uh, because it it was good yesterday at the teams and that, that worked pretty well. And in the final game, you tied the line a little bit and played it faster. Yeah. But I, I could really tell that I saw those different sets that you did. Slow hook it, then go straighter, and I, I liked your game. And obviously, when you win the tournament, everything has been pretty okay. Yeah, it has. I feel really good. Pretty good. So what are your next tournaments after this? Uh, maybe a world championship? I hope so. But I'm going to Denmark. To when are the youth world championships played? When? Uh, June. I think. And you haven't picked up the team yet? No. Well, good luck for you to that, that you get picked. And obviously, based on this, it would be kind of surprising if you didn't. And uh, good luck for the tournament in uh, Denmark also. Yeah, thank you. Thank you pretty much. That was an easy question. <laughs>